Okay, picking back up with the idea of making some souvlaki using the new Roto Q360. Um, I've already done a little bit of prep. I uh, portioned up some skewers uh, of pork butt. These are actually country style ribs. Uh, they didn't have any good looking pork butts at HEB when I was there. They were actually restocking. So grab these. Thought it'd make it a little bit easier on the prep work and everything else as well. You know, it's a lot of people use pork loin. Um, the way I've had it has been a mix of the two, and I actually prefer the flavor of the pork butt when it comes to the prep work for this. So pretty simple, uh, portioning these up into quarters. And that right there is just about two and a half pounds of pork butt that will go into the Savlaki recipe. Now, some other things that need to get done. The marinade. Uh, this is actually a take on Lada uh, Limino. It is really, in its simplest form, it is just olive oil and lemon juice. And for a lot of people, they like to add a few things to it. I like to add garlic, some lemon zest, some spices, including oregano. Oregano is pretty common for most Greek restaurants. Uh, by itself, it's really a simple vinaigrette. I think that adding some Dijon mustard to it helps it emulsify and be a little bit more flavorful, some turns of black pepper. So I've arrayed everything out here. I am gonna juice the final lemon. I am using lemon zest, which not everybody does. I like a little bit more lemon forward flavor. Um, if you haven't got a good lemon zester, and if you know somebody who does uh, Tupperware, believe it or not, this little thing, it's got a built-in zester with it and everything else. That's how I did this super quick. Uh, you know, it's, Admittedly, when I did this, I was doing it to help somebody else who was doing a Tupperware thing, and turns out the equipment they make is pretty good. It's much better than my other... It's more convenient for the zester part, but it's definitely better in terms of the juicer itself. So, I'm going with about three quarters of a cup of lemon juice for this. I'm going to get rid of this for now. You notice that I've already zested this lemon. And I've already rolled it as well. That rolling it, you know, some people actually throw them in the microwave, which to me, I don't know, it bothers me on some level. But rolling it helps release some of the juices before you actually have to put it in a juicer. So once that's done, again, it's right at three quarters of a cup. Um, the zest itself is going to definitely make it a little punchier, which I like. I've got some other things in there, including the mustard to help kind of a... Uh, kind of mellow things out a little bit. So at this point, it's time to start building the marinade. This is a cup and a half of extra virgin olive oil imported from Greece. Unfortunately, this part of, of Texas, you're not gonna really to find too many really good olive oils. I use a lot of the California stuff. Um, I used to use one by Critelli, but I think they closed up shop. This stuff is good, I've used in other things. It's great when it's you're looking for something that's not just me cooked out. As far as the lemon juice, of course, three quarters of a cup. And I will put the, the accurate measurements in the description for the video. As far as the spices, this is a couple tablespoons of Greek oregano and some thyme as well. Thyme is something I just like the flavor profile of. It's only about a teaspoon of thyme. This is a garlic paste. Um, I don't mind mincing garlic. I've got a garlic press, do everything else. This Alessi garlic puree, if you've never used it before, good flavor, super convenient, especially on the fly. And for things like this where Oops, you're not going to be cooking with it on a stove top where you actually want some of that textural bite and so on. I think it comes in super handy. It's a lot better than having to go through everything and <laughs> slavishly mince and, and paste and so on. Here's that lemon zest to talk about, zest of one lemon. Some salt. That Dijon mustard. to that olive oil out. This stuff's too good to waste. A couple of turns of black pepper just because I like black pepper. And these are Tella Cherry Peppercorns. Um, I like the flavor a little bit better. It's not, I think it's a more interesting. It has a deeper flavor profile. And just a couple of dollops of honey. This is a, a raw unfiltered honey. Not much. Uh, that's about right there, a little over a tablespoon. And that's it. Um, so, Let's get this party started.
it won't take long for this to blend, obviously, just a few seconds. And notice now that it's a perfect and creamy vinaigrette, basically, because that's really what Lata Lemono is. So the smell of this is just gorgeous. You, you pick up hints of the mustard, but really it's lemon forward. You pick up that fruity note of the olive as well. Um, what's going to happen now is this is going to go on the pork. And I'm not going to use all this. I'm actually going to reserve some of this marinade. But this will go in the fridge for probably about 12 hours, maybe a little bit more. The reason I want to reserve some is to use as essentially a finishing sauce. Um, it's, you know, you can serve these with pitas, you can serve this over rice. I'm going to use nature's best hands. Both my hands have been recently washed and they're clean. But you, you can serve this really any way you want. One of the neatest ways I think to serve it is with maybe like a saffron rice or even just a, a conventional rice and, and use some of the lettuce lemon over the top of it where it kind of forms its own little gravy. Um, I will let these sit, again, covered in the refrigerator overnight. Okay, we are picking back up. These souvlaki chunks have been marinating overnight in that lata limino marinade I created. And they're going on the skewers pretty easily. These will, so far, look like they're holding about five per comfortably. Uh, I'm trying to move some of the larger chunks to the middle, and that way, again, when it goes to a direct sear, they're the ones catching the brunt of the heat. Uh, the smell on this stuff is amazing. It, if you're not a big fan of Greek food, uh, first, what's wrong with you? But second, it's it's more savory than sweet. I, I think that's something that a lot of people do prefer. Um, there's just a hint of honey in this, nothing major. Some people do prefer their, their stuff sweeter. I'm not a big fan, uh, especially when it comes to things like lamb and so on. The skewering process is pretty convenient. The big thing will be to make sure, of course, that the meat is tight enough, I guess, on here, but still leaving room for the smoke to penetrate, because I do want to put it through a smoke phase. Current plan for me is to run it at about 30 minutes, at 175 or so, to pick up some smoke flavor, and then I'm going to probably move it uh, to a searing temp of, after I move the grate, probably run 350, 375, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're picking back up with the actual skewering process itself. The system is pretty intuitive. I found that the rubber gloves were just a little too slippery uh, to mount these things. So using the best tools anyone's got in the kitchen, which is your clean bare hands. Um, assembly of this thing took longer than it does, obviously, to, to mount these skewers and so on. Once you figure out the trick, which is just a little... Compression catch here. Um, it goes very nicely. So, last skewer is about to go in place. After this, we will take it out to the grill. I, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup, obviously, where some of the mess occurred. Uh, okay, we're picking back up. Uh, the smoker is set to 175 for now. Going to place it roughly dead center here, again, leaving the drip pan in place. Um, as far as clearance goes for the grill, fits perfectly dead center. Um, you can see the connection factors here. This is where the crank goes. I've already wound it uh, to roughly where it should be close to 60 minutes. And then we just go from there. Oop, one thing I forgot to do, activate it. So you pull the little tab and Bob's your uncle. Starting a 30 minute countdown and hopefully we will see some good smoke on these things in just a bit. Again, uh, already removed the sear plate. Uh, I'm going to bump it up to 350 degrees, let it get some browning. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove this to give it, again, that direct flame effect. And we will be back here in probably about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to see where things are. All right, check back in a bit. At this point, we're in for right at an hour. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Put the drip pan back in. And we will uh, get this onto the tray and shut things down out here and start moving this inside to see where things go. Smell on this is great. Um, again, I do wish it had a bit more browning, but that's more of a me figuring out how this system is going to work for the future. It does look like there was some drippage. I'll need to probably do a little bit more of a deep cleaning on the interior of the grill beneath the drip pan than normal. Uh, this is the first time that grease has actually dripped straight down on it. 
but shouldn't be too hard to clean up overall. So far, I'm liking this system. Uh, of course, the, uh, the proof will be in the tasting, I guess. So we'll stop for now and get this inside. I'll get it plated and I can figure out not only do I like the recipe for the souvlaki and the lada lemono, but is this Roto Q360 all it's cracked up to be? And they're done. So I made a little bit of a kind of a Greek, a riff on Greek potatoes. I used a little bit of the remaining uh, lada lemono to season some potatoes, a little bit of, of all things Cavender's Greek seasoning. I think that the souvlaki looks good, uh, easy to come off the skewer. And let's see how it looks in a bit of a cross section. Um, maybe a faint smoke ring. Let's see how it tastes. Good flavor. The lemon's pronounced. Probably could have done with a bit more salt. Definitely some more cracked pepper. So lock itself temperature wise perfectly where it needs to be. I'm not sure if this process necessarily beats grilling. I like it in theory. And I think if I were using something like a Weber kettle, it would be a lot more effective because there you're going with a high heat cook. Rotisseries inside a smoker during a smoke phase with low temps, they don't really bring much to the table. Um, if you've got temperature differential in your grill, that could be an issue with blazing. For me, it's never really been a significant issue. I think that maybe not even bothering with the motor for the smoke phase, if I'm gonna cook it for, I end up cooking it for 40 minutes, uh, 30 minutes at 175 and another 10 at 225 and then crank the temp all the way up to 350. I probably would cook these on the lowest shelf, which means the roller grates and not the first shelf of the pro shelves. That way the heat would be a little bit more direct as it rotates and for that final phase of, of 10 to 15 minutes gets a, a more of a char in there. The flavor is spot on. Again, I do think that the marinade, I'm gonna tweak just a little bit. Um, is the Roto Q360 worth it? Yes, with certain caveats. Their customer service so far has been, in my opinion, substandard. I know it's a Kickstarter, I know they're learning to create their own business, but the lack of communication was a concern. That being said, the product's well built. It is. It does what it says it's gonna do. I did get the full hour out of the, uh, the charging core, or the power core, in terms of the rotations. Um, it didn't bog down, it seems, under weight. I mean, admittedly, it was, it was less than three pounds of, of total uh, pork that was on those skewers. Five pounds might be a bit different. I'm considering, I've got a small leg of lamb. It, it's a partial boneless leg of lamb. I think it weighs about four and a half pounds. I might try that in a, uh, just a, maybe a few weeks. It's worth it to add to the arsenal. Again, I could see this probably being used more in my oven than I would be on the smoker in terms of creating a rotisserie chicken. It wouldn't be bad on the grill, again, with those, with those modifications in terms of process, about lowering it down to the bottom shelf when you're ready to start turning. Um, in terms of how we're basting it on a regular basis, then yes, of course, especially with a chicken or maybe uh, an iro loaf, like you might find with Alton Brown's recipe or so on. Then, then it might come in a little bit more handy. With the souvlaki, since they're marinated, they didn't need those steps. And it's only a few pieces have the char that I was looking for. And again, those, if it lived go any longer, I think the meat would have been a bit more dried out. I've got to work on the timing factor if I'm going to make the idea of kebabs a success. I do have some ideas about doing a, almost a, a pesto, an al pastor kebab and doing it for tacos. And that one probably will be the next time I, I use this system. Uh, at least in a similar process to what I've got here. So overall, again, I think it's a success. The, the food quality is where I would want it to be. I consider this a good meal. It's as good as what I would get at a Greek festival or whatever else. Again, I would add just a bit more salt, a bit more black pepper to give it some punch. But again, flavor, awesome. If I ladled some of the extra lada lemon over the top of it, it probably would be spot on. I may, again, just do it old school, add a little bit of table salt, table pepper, and boom goes the dynamite. Again, Roto Q360, um, I wish them well. I, it's a product that if I bought it, would I pay for a hundred bucks? It's worth a hundred dollars. That's, that's what I paid for the system. It frustrates me about the lack of instructions. It frustrates me about the lack of communication. I think that a lot of the people who've been sounding off in message boards on Facebook and elsewhere are experiencing some of the same issues. Hopefully get, they get the bugs worked out. I'm always happy to see a company, uh, happy to see entrepreneurs making good on something. And again, they've got a good product 
It just needs a few little tweaks here and there and definitely some work on the, on the CS side of things. Other than that, that is a wrap for this video. I'm gonna settle down for some Greek potatoes and some Savlaki. Hope you guys have a great weekend.